Hello there, today we're going to solve IGCSE accounting paper 2 to February, March 2024, starting from question number one. Also, would like to remind you, we offer live online classes. You can join our sessions through jadeedinstitute.com. That's how it's spelled. So you may go there, register yourself for the next session and study with our expert tutors. Um, we have seen great improvements, amazing results from our students who come from all sorts of backgrounds. So um, you may give it a try. Number one, Gurjeet is a trader. During January 2024, the following transactions took place. All these bunch of transactions, what do we have to do? Let, let's read the requirement. Prepare Gurjeet's cash book on the opposite page. Balance the cash book and bring down the balances on 1st February 2024 your regular cash book question. Um, and then we have a little bit of bank reconciliations, some theory questions, and then some definitions. All right, let's begin. One by one, we'll deal with all these transactions. January 4, cash sales, $640 were paid directly into the bank account. So two things are concerned, sales account and the bank account, right? It says pay directly into bank, so you just have to debit bank, credit sales, credit sales, debit bank, okay? Paid Sandy 551 by credit transfer. That just means through bank, having deducted 5% cash discount. Be careful with these. So this is the final payment after deduction, okay? How do I know that? It says having deducted. One more thing, how do I know that? Paid. So that's what we actually paid. Now we wouldn't pay before deducting the discount. Think about that, okay? So this has to be post discount. Now, 5% of this is not 5% of 551 is not 5% of original figure. Can you imagine that? So you can't just take 5% of this. It's 5% of that X amount, which is before discount. So how do we find it? Well, uh, this is basically 95% of the original, right? So one way to deal with this would be to just do 551 divided by 95% or 0 0.95 or you can imagine percent in terms of units so what you can do is 551 divided by 95 times if you want the original figure times 100 if you want the discount figure times 5 so let's do it times 100 see what we get 51 gives me 580 that gives me 580 so that must be the original amount that's what we received and so 29 is the discount received okay so next one paid cash 120 dollars for wages two things are involved oh by the way here we have sandy and bank Two things involved, right? Double entry. Duality, we know that. Paid cash, $120 for wages. Very simple. Free marks. Uh, so cash deb cash credit, it's being paid. Wages debit, their expenses. Receive payment by check, that means bank. Okay, one thing there. From UMA. So that's another. That's another account involved. So we can deal with that. Easy. Paid Viraj 194 by telephone transfer. What would that be? Now, telephone transfer can't go into cash, right? So it's some sort of a bank payment, okay? In full settlement of an invoice for $200. So you can tell that's what's paid and that's what the invoice was. So that tells us $6 is discount of course we can we can decide whether it's discount received or allowed later on withdrew cash from the bank 
$100 for business use. Give you a second to tell me what that type of transaction is called. One, two, three. That's a contra. Okay, a contra entry. So withdrew cash means cash going down from the bank. My apologies. Cash going up because we are taking money out of the bank. That's credit. Okay. So we figured out the whole thing. All we have to do is get those free 10 marks, pretty much. Just a couple challenges there. That slightly challenging. And that just another way to put the same thing. Okay. Let's begin. January 4, cash sales, 640. Paid directly into bank, 640. Goes under bank. Call that sales. And you just have to put the date for. That's it. Done with that first one. We get, we're just getting these marks now. That's all we have to do. Uh, moving on. Next one is about paying. So paid 551. Paid 551. 29 was discount received. Who did we pay? Sandy. When did we pay Jan 7? Do we have to write 2024? No, because it's written above. So there's that heading and then Jan, just write that once. Then you just have to write the dates from here on. That's it. Paid cash $120 for wages. So that happened on 13th. Out of cash account 120 we call that wages. Okay, let's move on. Received payment 415 from UMA. How did we receive through bank? 415 UMA. That's 19. Okay, move on. Paid Viraj 194 by telephone transfer. 194 is paid. Discount received on that is 6. Who did we pay? Viraj. When did we pay? 21st. Withdrew cash from bank, $100 for business use. So cash would be debit. Bank would be credit. We label this as cash because that's where it's coming from. You may put C there or what? Can you guess? That's right. Contra. Bank. coming, Cash coming in from where? From the bank. So again, you may put contra there. 25 25 and we're done like that they have told us to bring down the balances and that's basically like that's what you should assume to do in all the cases let's add them all up
sorry i had to go back uh i had to go um uh, do something just uh took a minute's break now all right uh i just added those up now what we're going to do is on the shorter side we are going to put the balance brought down so in this case as you can see for the for the cash account and for the bank account the credit side is shorter so we're going to put balance carry down there and uh, well that happens on the last day so you may put 30 31 doesn't matter if you put 30 you don't remember how many days there are in january it's not a big deal so what are we going to do you may also make the totals column remember sometimes you might have balance on both sides when does that happen that happens when cash perhaps is a debit balance bank might be a credit balance right okay so let's uh, get the differences 275 minus 120 that's 155 okay sorry wrong column 155 and if you subtract the other one two four two five four five minus that's 1700 and uh, well if you add them up now because you filled in the blank if you filled in the difference so now it's just going to be 275 here two five four five there same thing here 275 2545 and the discount columns remember they're not balanced they're just totaled so that's 35 that's it they specifically told you to bring down the balance on feb 1 so we're gonna call that balance brought down 155 and one thing you shouldn't learn from me is how to write okay so do better than this i'm just struggling with my digital pen otherwise on a piece of paper you have more friction okay um that's it for this question let's move on complete the following table by placing tick in the correct column to indicate whether each item would be used to update cash book or would appear in bank reconciliation statement okay let's see bank error now if, it, if it's a bank error then it has nothing to do with our records so that that's our records and that's banks records bank error which is quite rare in these in this in these days uh, but if it happens we need to fix that in the bank statement uh, we need to fix the bank statement balance so brs needs to be updated check from uma dishonored now think about who would have this information earlier the bank would know that before you right if something is dishonored bank actually told you it's dishonored so why would we update it in the bank reconciliation statement where we need to update it is in our own records okay bank charges again bank is the one who charged you so they would already know about it we just need to update our cash book easy stuff three marks gurjit is considering paying amounts of less than 20 dollars via petty cash okay it sounds good he would pay all larger amounts by bank transfer or card payment that's fine okay good he would also require his customers to pay all amounts due by bank transfer or card payment now that's a small issue because maybe not everybody would want to do that some might prefer paying cash some might not have enough money in the bank or they may not be legally allowed to keep a certain amount of money well there, there can be a bunch of reasons maybe their cards have limits right that's another thing so a bunch of reasons why someone wouldn't want to pay by cash uh, oh, sorry by bank transfer maybe they don't have the bank account Gurjit would stop issuing and receiving checks well Gurjit is trying to move forward but not everybody may be so happy with that advise Gurjit whether or not he should make the above changes so um, well we can say that uh, 
it will be more convenient like this. A uh, bigger transaction going through bank will reduce chances of fraud, right? Bigger transactions going through bank will reduce chances of theft. These are two different things. Fraud is one, theft is different, okay? And then uh, that's a couple good points about this idea. Only small transactions uh, are going through cash and the rest is going through bank. That's safer, reduces chances of theft and also reduces chances of um, fraud, okay? That's one thing. Uh, well, another thing with checks, checks maybe checks are an outdated thing, right? Checks are outdated. They get rejected, right? They get dishonored. That's problem. So, I mean, this is in support. So you heard already like four or five points from me. Checks are old, okay? They get dishonored. That's in support of this idea. Some uh, uh, bank transfer is safer, lesser fraud, lesser uh, theft, chances of theft. That's in support of the idea, okay? Now, what's against the idea? You can say, uh, well, as I said earlier, some customers may prefer paying uh, in cash for any reason. You may give the reason or you may not. So some customers may prefer paying in cash. Uh, some customers uh, may not have bank accounts. Some customers may have card limits, right? Um, so that's enough, I think. That that should be enough uh, for five marks. And then give a conclusion. And conclusion is always based on your... It's your opinion, right? So... Uh, actually, in this case, there's no need, like you can conclude it, give your final verdict, but you don't really have to uh, give uh, an opinion, right? Or do you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an advice, so you, you would have to say which option he should go for. Let's keep moving. State the meaning of the following terms, bank overdraft. Uh, you may pause the video, answer these two. Let me do it now. Okay. Bank overdraft is when you withdraw more than you have in the bank account. So when with when when you spend or withdraw more than you have in the bank account. So essentially your bank account becomes negative. Your bank account balance becomes negative. Um, you now owe money to the bank, right? It's a liability bunch of different ways to put it. You don't have to say so much. Just a couple points should be enough. Bank charges are the fees fees uh, for banks banking services that is a that is issued to you by the bank, right? Deducted by the bank. So bank charges are the fees uh, for bank services that are deducted by the bank. That's it. So you may hear that again or you may refer to the mark scheme. Uh, to get like written answers. It, it would be like a very time consuming and unnecessary to write all of that. Let me know in the comments, would you prefer me putting it on the screen or do you think that's fine? Let's uh, move on.